Ah, there we are. <laughs> Happy Sabbath, everyone. I want to know, why is it beautiful all week and then rain on the weekends? So frustrating. <laughs> but I'm glad that we can be here together today and at least have some, make some of our own sunshine uh, as we gather together to worship the Lord, to meet and greet each other, see everyone. Uh, do we have any visitors today? Welcome. So glad to see you. Glad you could join our service. I think maybe it's related to a baby. <laughs> I think we have a baby dedication today. All right. Um, what we do at the beginning of our service is we have a chance to get up and meet and greet each other. A uh, special welcome to our visitors. Before we do, let me just open with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for this Sabbath day, and even though it's gloomy outside, we're glad for the sunshine inside. I pray that your Holy Spirit will be in this room today as we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church. Ah, no, no, no. I know we're all still talking to each other. Good morning. morning. Happy Sabbath. It's so nice to see everyone today. Um, even though it's a little bit nasty outside, it's nice that we're all in here together as a family. And as a family, I'd invite that you would sing and worship with us this morning.
Good morning again. Andre, it was so cool to see you up here standing and singing. That was a lot of fun. Um, I hope I don't embarrass you, but if, if you have never heard Andre's story and his life journey, I'll have to say it's one of the most interesting and inspiring journeys. So if you ever get a chance to, to chat with him, ask him about it. Well, we're so glad, again, that you could join us today. Uh, this is the part of our program we call Church Life. And Church Life is about events and about people. And I don't know if any of you guys remember from your old geometry days back in high school, but there was something called a Venn diagram. Does that ring a bell to anyone? A Venn diagram? Okay. A Venn diagram is when you take circles and the circles intersect and that intersection is something special. So in church life, we have a circle of events, 
I have things that happen. We have a circle of people, and where it gets interesting is when those two interact, when the joy of the event is the people. So today I'm gonna to share with you a number of events and some special things about people as well. So the first one is actually an event that was planned for tomorrow. It was a church outing to go to Crystal Grotto's Cavern, but unfortunately the weather is not cooperating and we're supposed to have some pretty heavy storms tomorrow. Uh, so Pastor Carol decided that we will delay this and uh, reschedule it to another time where hopefully the, the weather will cooperate. Um, the second one is um, on May 6th, which is next week, is going to be the launch of the men's ministry, and that's being led out by New Begin. So contact him if you're interested. And then um, that kickoff will be right after the worship service. The following week, on May 13, Pastor Carol is kicking off the women's ministry, which will also meet right after the church service. Then uh, the week after that, which is the week of Sabbath, May 20, we have a very special series of, uh, put on by our health ministry team. And it is a special guest speaker uh, talking about cancer prevention. And there will be seminars on Friday evening and then several on Sabbath. And all the details um, are there in the bulletin. And then the last event I'd like for you to mark your calendars is on, um, we, uh, sorry, did the, did the wrong, you know, I really needed to put my glasses on, that's all I can say, uh, is, the, uh, is the outdoor church for the graduates. And sorry, I can't see the date, but if you can look that up in your bulletin, it's there. <laughs> June 3rd, thank you, Steve. Okay, June 3, uh, we're gonna have outdoor church and celebrate all of our graduates. Okay, so now the people part, some very special people part. We actually need some people. We're looking for volunteers to do several things. The first is related to this uh, cancer prevention series is that we would like to go through the neighborhood and pass out flyers. So there is a sign-up sheet uh, in the back. You'll see that the, the map here behind me, there's different zones that have been set out. So you'll be assigned to a zone and to a leader for that zone. So if you're interested in supporting that ministry by sharing with our neighbors about this very special event, there's a sign-up sheet on the table right outside the sanctuary, so please do that. And when you go back there, you'll see there's two other sign-up sheets. Uh, one is for Children's Story, if you're interested in to participate in that ministry, uh, we'd love for you to sign up. And then the second is for Scripture Reading. And let's see, the next one, Rose, can I embarrass you? Is Rose still here? Can you go ahead and stand up? We have been blessed that Rose has been visiting from Zambia, but she goes home tomorrow, so we just want to wish you all the best, safe travels, and uh, I told Rose, I was sorry to see her go. She says, it's okay, because we're gonna see each other again in heaven. So I think that is a, a really beautiful sentiment. So all the best to you, Rose. <laughs> You know, I really appreciate that sentiment, Rose, because in this church in particular, and part of it is because we're in Washington, D.C., is that people come and go pretty regularly, and we make very uh, uh, strong friendship ties quickly, and then sometimes those people have to leave. But what a great hope that we're going to see everyone again in heaven because of Jesus. So thank you for sharing that, Rose. Okay, and my last one uh, is um, uh, an administrative task. We have a transfer coming uh, to CMC. Uh, Marilyn Badillo from Laurelwood. Is Marilyn here today? Okay, so this is the uh, second reading for that membership transfer. Uh, do I have a motion? And a second, okay, I heard both. Uh, all in favor? Okay, the motion is carried, thank you. And with that, I'll ask the deacons to come up. So um, as we proceed through our service today, this is the time that we give back to God. Uh, obviously, God doesn't need our money, he needs our heart, but what we give in the offering plate is an extension of that heart and also following um, his advice for our life to give back to him. So let's bow our heads. Dear Father in heaven, thank you again for this opportunity to worship you, to serve you, and to give to you. I pray that you will take these offerings to further the message of your love and your hope, and most importantly, to make your soon coming sooner. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Bless Sabbath, everyone. Children, it is now time for the children's story. So if you could go to the back and grab a basket for today's offering. And all of the proceeds will be going to the Children's Education Fund. All right, children, you could go to the back. That's everyone that's under the age of 12. You could go to the back and grab a basket for the children's story. Thank you so much. And if all the children could sit in the middle of the steps, please. Thank you. Oh, thank you for following directions. You guys are doing so great this morning. All right, we're just waiting on a few. All right. Good job. All right, okay. We wanna sit in the middle. I need you to put that right here. Thank you so much. And I need you to sit in the middle. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, are you gonna come join us in the middle? Thank you. All right, good morning, good morning children. How was your week in school this week? Good? Good, it was okay. Thumbs, thumbs up if you had a good week this week. All right. All right. Good, good. So, how many weeks do you guys have in school left? How many? Five? Five weeks countdown has started? How many? Uh, I don't know. I had what? I only had 146. 146. All right. All right. All right, are you, so the question that I had today, and it's also the title of our story, are you ready? Are you ready for summer break? I know I'm ready. All right. You're not ready? All right, well, tell me this. You are ready? So what's this? Can someone tell me what's this? A pencil. A pencil. What type of pencil is this, though? What makes this pencil so special? Hold on, let me come over. That it can write. That it can write, absolutely. What, but what's the answer I'm looking for? What makes this pencil?
original to hear so special? About creation. Creation? Okay, okay. You can erase mistakes. You can erase mistakes. That's deep. That's deep right there. But it's a number two pencil. A number two pencil. And what do we use number two pencils for? For writing and not coloring. Uh, for writing, absolutely. Okay. So the number two pencil. How many of you took a big test in school? And what type of pencil you have to use? A number two. A number two pencil. So when I... Okay, you use a pen. Okay, so me, when I use a number two pencil and I have my students use number two pencils, I enforce it, right? That means they're about to take a big test, but they have to be ready for it, right? You got to have that test because if I'm at that pencil, if you don't have the number two pencil, your answers are not going to be viewable on your test. Excuse me, love. All right, all right. Okay, so as Christians, you guys, talking about tests, as Christians, we are going to be tested with our faith, right? We're tested. People tell us that Jesus isn't real, the Sabbath isn't holy, but we got to always use our faith so we're always ready. What is something we can use to be ready to prepare us for that test? What is something that we can use? God. God, absolutely. What's another tool we can use? Hammers. Okay, okay. Pray. Pray, pray. But what is the textbook that we can use to keep us ready for all of these tests? The Bible. The Bible, yes. And in the Bible, it tells us that we will always be tested. Even Jesus was tested by Satan, right, in the wilderness. But Jesus knew, just like you guys said, God, he knew to pray, and he passed that test. He did not fail that test from Satan. All right? So the moral of this story, start seeking answers, and you will be ready for any test in life when we get into our word and we pray. All right, so can I have a volunteer pray for us today? Okay, all right, so let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Dear Lord, thank you for everything. Thank you for uh, having a good morning and a good mood. And um, you are my special gift. I can count on you. And, and I want to thank you everything what you did. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, children, so you could go back and have a seat with your parents. Thank you. Good morning, church family. Praise God. At this time, we get to... Um, um, that's okay. uh, participate in a wonderful experience. Probably one of the most important aspects of all of our lives is when our parents, our guardians, dedicate us, bring us to God. Because at that point in our lives, we are not aware, we don't know what's going on, but God wants us to bring our children. So at this time, I want to invite Amelia's family all of the family to come up, Joy, mother, grandmother, all of you to come up, and all of the family, if you're here, family and friends, those that have joined today, if you could come forward so that we can publicly, as a family and as a church family, embrace this beautiful baby. You know, the Bible tells us many things, but children are a blessing. They are a heritage from God. So come on up. A miracle. You know, when each every time there's a bird, that's a miracle. It's a miracle from God. So praise God. Come on up. Just stand here. Yes. Maybe we could. I don't know if they want us to move the. Okay. Praise God. Yes. Beautiful. 
it speaks volumes when the family comes and surrounds the baby, yes, and mother. Amelia, let me get it right, Chibwe. Yes, Amelia Chibwe, okay. What a beautiful, come on up, come on up to the front. We wanna see this beautiful baby and family. Look, I know, isn't she gorgeous? Ooh, look at those beautiful eyes. Yes, yes, we are so thankful. Uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you for uh, deciding, because sometimes people do not do this, but deciding to dedicate your baby to Jesus Christ, because at this age, she doesn't know, but she's looking at us, and you're just beautiful, and we wish you had those beautiful eyes and that beautiful skin, just beautiful, so soft. Yes, you know what the Word of God says, family and friends, and thank you. I think this is uh, reflective of the love that your family and your friends have for you, Joy and Amelia, and yes, the word of God says that behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. This is a heritage, this is a miracle. This is, the, Amelia is a gift from God. The fruit of the womb is a reward, it says. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, you know, like a warrior will have a weapon or something they will throw or, or do. Uh, it says, so are children of one's youth. And happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak. And so he's saying it's a heritage, it's a blessing to have a baby. And understand every child is a gift from God. So I want you to know that. We all came here because God said, before she was formed in your womb, he says, I knew this, I knew Amelia. So praise God. We say thank you, yes, yes, yes. And it's a blessing to be able to commit your child to God. It is what God's will is, so that this is covering her and praying for her and saying we want you to know Jesus even before, yes, even before you can get to say his name, before, even as you're learning mommy and daddy, you're, you're saying Jesus, okay? Yes, yes, yes. So at this time, we're going to just go forward and thank God for this beautiful child, his child, his gift to you all, his gift to the family, to the friends, and to our church family. So we want to know, family, as we stand, if you are going to be a part of this church family, that you're going to stand with joy. You're going to stand with the family. You're going to be there and help when Amelia needs some support or encouragement or some prayer, and mom and, and, and dad need that as well. You're going to say, yes, I, I will pray. I will stand in the gap, okay? So you see all these people? So that says we love you, we appreciate you, and we want you to know that we're here to help raise this child in Jesus Christ, to help her, to comfort her along the way and to encourage her. We love you all, and we love this beautiful baby. And we thank God for grandmother. Grandmother has come and been a blessing, and we will talk about you a little bit more, but what a blessing that you have come across the ocean to be here, to, to nurture, to fill in the gap with your granddaughter. So we thank God for you. I just want to reiterate that this is a responsibility when we raise a child. That's a very significant responsibility. I know when my, I had my child, only one child, and my grandparents took us aside and said, it's not about you anymore. This is no longer, you're the focus of your life is me, me, me. It's time to focus on raising your child. That is the focus of your life and to raise your child in the fear and the admonition of God. So I want you to know, first of all, that this is a great part of the battle, first of all, is bringing your child to Jesus. And that God is calling you not to perfection, you're not perfect, no one here is perfect, but to be an example, to bring your child to church, bring Amelia to church, bring her to Sabbath school, let her grow up learning about Jesus, being that example for her. And that let me tell you that in order to be a good parent, it takes Jesus. We cannot do it by ourselves. So yes, we have a tribe, we have a family, but we need Jesus Christ, and that is the only way.
So once again, we praise God for you bringing her. We're going to dedicate her to Jesus, but thank you because this is the beginning, we believe, of her journey with Jesus Christ. So as we pray, if you could just touch someone next to you, those that are close, lay hands on Amelia, and just put your hands forward, church family, as we pray. I will just let her, uh, I don't know, do you think she'll let me hold her? <laughs> she may? Okay, let's, let me hold that. Let me see. Ms. Amelia, praise God. Praise, ooh, praise God. Praise God. Amen. Let us lay hands on her. Praise God. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this beautiful child. This child that is a miracle. This child that you said, yes, come forth. And she is here today. Lord, we lift her up to you. We ask that you touch her, Father God. Keep your hand upon her. Help her to know that she is loved by the God of this universe and that she's loved by her family, her mother, her father, her grandparents, her, her aunties, her uncles, friends and family, Lord. We pray that you would protect Amelia all the days of her life, that you would bless Amelia, that you would keep Amelia, and that one day, Amelia will say yes to Jesus herself, Father God. But until that time, we dedicate and we ask that you keep your angels around her. Keep her, Father, as she begins this journey, Lord. Help her parents give them wisdom and guidance and love for you, love for each other, love for her, their daughter, Father, and help them to be dedicated to raising her up in Jesus Christ, at church, in the home with Bible study and family worship. Bless your baby, Amelia. Bless her, guide her, keep her, Father God, all the days of her life that she knows that she is loved by the God of this universe and she has a support system all around her that will be with her. We thank you, Father, for the dreams that you have for Amelia, the destiny that you have for Amelia. We thank you and praise you that no weapon that is formed against this baby shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against her in judgment we call condemned, Father. We thank you, Father. Fill this child, Father God, as she grows in you, grow in your word, grow as a little one, Lord, learning about you. Fill her with your spirit, Father. Keep her all the days of her life is our prayer request. And we thank you in advance for her life, for her spirit and the guidance and for her destiny and her purpose being fulfilled in Jesus Christ, that she will have Christian friends, that she will fulfill the purpose that you have for her on this journey, and that she will be found in your kingdom as a child of God, a young girl in God, a young lady who loves Jesus Christ. We say thank you. In Jesus' name, bless Amelia, bless her parents, bless this family. We thank you and dedicate her as yours. In Jesus' name, let us all say together. Amen. Amen. Look at Amelia. Praise God. Amen. She let me hold her. <laughs> Praise God. We have a gift over. Uh, Miss Ruth is right over here. A gift and a card. We have a certificate. Let us say praise God together. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Praise God. Praise God. Did we get some pictures? Praise God. Uh, the, right over there, right over here on the pulpit. Yes, yes, yes. We have it. We have it, Ruth. Thank you. Here is a certificate and a certificate of dedication and a card. I'm sorry, I didn't put your name there. And a little gift. And we'll give you another one for you as well. We thank God for you. We praise God. Thank you. Thank you for bringing her. Thank you again, Joy. We praise God for you being here. God bless you, family. We appreciate you and we thank you. Yes, little Amelia. Let us give him another praise God hand. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Yes. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. If you are able, please kneel with me as we pray.
Father, thank you so much for um, another Sabbath day. Lord, thank you that uh, spring is here. Thank you that we have a uh, safe uh, physical space um, where we can gather together and worship you. And uh, Father, thank you for uh, beautiful moments like uh, this baby dedication, Lord. Thank you that um, thank you that we can come together, that we have a community, uh, that we have caring people who can um, do this and who can who can commit to this, um, Lord? As we come to you in uh, prayer, we always ask for uh, forgiveness for those things we've done wrong, Lord. Uh, we ask that you continue to guide us and work on us, uh, so that we can uh, do what's right, so that we can um, choose to do what's right, and so that we can uh, want to do what's right, Lord. Please always keep us on a path to uh, becoming better, to becoming more like you. And together today, we, we pray on behalf of these, uh, for the sick and for those who care for them. Please give them comfort, give them energy, uh, give them the, the wisdom and knowledge to do what needs to be done. For those who are traveling or going to be traveling, uh, please... Um, Get them to their def destination safely and swiftly. Father, um, we pray for those who are hurting inside. Please, um, please help those around them to uh, be able to, to comfort them, to be there for them, um, to be uh, present, um, even if uh, there's quiet pain, inside pain and questioning, um, and we pray for those in the shadow of political violence and, and unrest right now. Father, please, uh, please bring peace. Father, um, today we, uh, we ask that you be with everybody who runs this service and, and keeps things going for the worship team who can guide us in, in worshiping you, um, for those who keep the sound and the lights on, and for those who, um, who are up front and speaking and reading scripture. And Lord, uh, we especially ask you to be with Pastor Carol today as she, as she shares your message. Um, be with her, guide her words, and be with us to help us to listen and help us to be open to your message. Lord, we pray these things in your son's name. Amen.
scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 to 18. So I say let the Holy Spirit guide your lives then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants and the spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are consistently fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation of the, to the law of Moses. May God add blessings to the reading of his word. Amen. Blessings. That is beautiful. Thank you, Nathan. What a blessing to share the word of God, to hear it from a child's mouth. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Did you see my husband's back? Praise God. Yes, yes. Uh, but all of you, welcome. We're so thankful that you're here, family, and those that are online as well. Thank you. And once again, to the parents of beautiful Amelia, God bless you. God bless you. We thank God for you. It means something to dedicate your child to God. So thank you for being here. And for everyone, everyone that has participated, Alexis, thank you for um, a beautiful children's story. And Lisa for a beautiful um, invitation for us to come and be a part of the church family. And for the worship team, just beautiful. And do you see all the children here? You see that? The children, God, when God brings children, he's really speaking because this is where they learn and they grow is in the house of God. And it's important that we bring them so they, they, they have a foundation in Jesus Christ. 
Um, thank you again, and for Alex, beautiful prayer. Thank you. We do remember those that are in prison, those that are being persecuted. We should not, and I pray we're not taking it for granted that we are here in the house of God today. We can freely come and worship, freely travel on the roads, freely come and praise him and come together. What a blessing. Today, um, we're continuing on. We're finishing up the series on the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you've enjoyed it. I've been a little bit, I've been blessed by it. I hope you have to some degree. Um, we want to sort of land here and really look at not just the gift, the fruit of the Spirit that we've been examining these last uh, two months, but now the Holy Spirit. Let us look at the purpose of the Holy Spirit. Do we need the Holy Spirit in these last days? Yes, we need him for the fruit, but what else is God saying? And especially now that we are seeing things that are transpiring in the world that indicate that there is going to come an end to much that is going on, to the evil, to the controversy of good versus evil. There will be an end. So uh, I know there are a lot of people, and I've um, been around some groups and things and, and studied with people, and they were focused on just the end. What are we doing for the end? What are we doing for the end? And I think um, God wants us to have some balance. He wants us to have understanding. What does he require for us to be prepared for his return to make it through the evil that is going on and the things that are going on in the world today. What is God saying? So that's where we're going to land today. That's what we're going to look at as a culmination, as a summation to the, the Fruit of the Spirit series. So thank you again uh, for that prayer. And let us jump in. I just want to jump in. I don't really have a story. I'll share a few things with you as we go forward. So this is the text that we've been looking at. What is the fruit of the Spirit? Is Can we just say that together? Can we just say the fruit of the Spirit? I don't know if you've ever had any issue with, do I know all the fruit of the Spirit? I'm supposed to be bearing this fruit. Do I know this? So let us say that together. We're going to start at love. But the fruit of the Spirit is love joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such. He said, there's no law. There's nothing against that. When you live, when we are allowing the Holy Spirit to fill us, we can have that fruit. This is where God wants us to live. That's what he wants us to produce, but we cannot do that by ourselves. We need the Holy Spirit. So let's um, just focus on the Holy Spirit for a bit and then... Um, We'll, I'll be out of your way here. I'm just going to look at what, why is he important? Is the Holy Spirit important? Is he necessary? So who is the Holy Spirit? What does the Bible say? The word of God tells us in Matthew 28, 19. He says, go therefore and make disciples. So in order for us to make disciples, we have to be a disciple. We have to be a Christ follower. We have to be a Christian. He says, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the name of the Son and in the name of what? The Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is just not uh, some entity, some people. I know there's a lot of debates now. Won't get into that, but the Bible tells us. He says, this is what we baptize in. This is who was, uh, so it's not just someone. It's part of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is part of the Godhead. So that's who the Holy Spirit, we're talking about God. And so why is it? Do we need the Holy Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit important? Is it important for us to understand that he's God and invite him into our lives? This is what the word of God tells us. It says, but you will receive power. How many of us, anybody need power to make it through this life, to make it through a week, a day? He says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now, he was talking to the disciples, but he's also talking to us. And he says, and you will be my witnesses. So if we're going to live in power, power to do what? Power to, to come to Christ, power to stay with the Lord, power to overcome through the Holy Spirit. The tendencies, as Nathan read, the flesh wants to rise up, the flesh wants to take over, the flesh, we just want to do our own thing. So he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So first thing is power, he said, and you'll be witnesses. He says also, the Holy Spirit's our helper. Anyone in here need help? Anyone need help? I, I, it could be in our relationships, in our marriages. It's wonderful to get married. But I tell people all the time, when you're living with someone day after day after day, uh, you need help. <laughs> you need help in allowing that person to grow, uh, not being their parent, because that's not what we do, uh, and just loving them and learning about them. We need help. And help in all the things we do. He says, whom the Father will send. He says, the Father's going to send. 
He's God. He will teach you all things. Do it. He says, so I want to, to give you power. I want to help you. I want to teach you. And then he tells us, he says, likewise, the Holy Spirit, do you know this, helps us when we're weak. We all have weaknesses. We all have places that we're blinded. He says, he will help us in our weakness. He says, for we don't even know what to pray. Do you know that? The word of God says, yes, we're praying, but do we even know what really to pray? I have a real issue. I have a real situation. I have a real pain. I have a real addiction. I have a real uh, strong scenario, a situation. I have no idea what to do with. And he says, the Holy Spirit is the one that will help. The Holy Spirit is the one that will help us even to pray, to know. He says, and do you know? God, he says, I, he's praying for us. Can you imagine that? He says, the Holy Spirit's interceding. So how do we receive? So first of all, can I should see a show of hands? Do you know that we need the Holy Spirit? Do you need the Holy Spirit? Can we say that? Yes, yes, praise God. So how do we receive the Holy Spirit? Is it just something sort of a one and done? We're baptized or we take Bible studies and that's what happens? Well, the word of God says, and I know it's a little small print, but I'm gonna go through it here quickly. So this is what God says. He says, so I say to you, ask. He says, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and it will be opened to you. And I know people use that that verse for many things. They'll say, well, I'm gonna ask for a a new house. I'm gonna ask for this, I'm gonna ask for that. But what the context of this scripture is, he says, for everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. To him who knocks, he says, it will be open. And he says, so let me give you an example first. He says, if a son asks his father for bread, from any father among you. He says, if he asks you for bread, would you say, no, uh, you want a piece of bread? Here, here's a rock, here, here, here's a stone, here's a boulder, eat that. Or if he asks you for a fish, will you go out and give him something that's going to harm him, a serpent? Will you go get him a snake? He says, if he asks you, oh, I want some eggs, and I don't know, I know a lot of vegetarians, but some are not. <laughs> Have you seen the price of eggs? My goodness. <laughs> uh, and he says, will you give him a scorpion? You know, a scorpion will sting you and hurt you. Will you do that to your child? Never, never to little Amelia, never to any child. He says, if you then, being evil, he says, you're evil. You're, you're sinners, we're all sinners. He says, no, you know how to give a good gift to your child. He says, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit? He says, if all you have to do is do what? Take it for granted? To those who do what? Ask. He says, all you have to do is ask. So in inviting the Holy Spirit, so if we want the Holy Spirit, we want to live, it's a daily process. Ask the Holy Spirit, come into my life. Help me with this decision. Help me with this scenario. Help me with this situation. We need the Holy Spirit. So I think that, that solidifies we need the Holy Spirit. But the, the issue right now is, as Alex said nicely in his uh, prayer, you know, there's so many things that are going on right now in the world that we don't even understand. We're trying to understand what's the solution? How do we deal with it? People are hurting. There is wars and rumors of wars. People do not have enough food. People are, clean water is just an issue. Just so many things. Do we allow this beautiful baby? Many people are debating about that and I'm not trying to get political, but all of us, praise God, someone birthed us and did not murder us did not take our lives. And I know there are situations, but we're all here and praise God that we have a chance. So what do we do in the end days? What is the Holy Spirit? What is the purpose? Why is the Holy Spirit to be a part of our lives? So here is what the Bible says, and then I'll get to my, my passage and we'll be finished there. It says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. He says, this is whom we are sealed by. Now, I'm not sure if you understand this concept of sealing, and we're going to unpack it a little bit. He says, for the day of redemption, there is going to come a day that Jesus Christ will come back. I know it seems like everything is going to continue on. Things are going to be difficult. There's going to be sin. There's going to be evil. All of these things happening. But he says, there's going to be a day that Jesus will come back. He will redeem his people. And he says, the Holy Spirit is going to be the sealer. And so it says here, Revelation 7, 2 and 3, it says, I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal. There's a seal. Have you ever seen a seal? And I'll show you a picture in a second. Of the living God. He cried with a loud voice to the four angels. He said, there's going to come time to whom it was given to hurt the earth. There's going to be a lot of hurt and pain, as we're seeing already. And he says, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have been sealed of our God 
in their foreheads. The sealer is the Holy Spirit. So if you've ever seen a seal, it's a stamp. You seal something. They used to use this in England and old uh, European culture. And in Bible days, if you had a uh, mandate or an edict from a king, they had to put their stamp on it. They had to put their seal. Now, nowadays we have wax and things like that, but they would put their seal and without that seal, it meant nothing. You could not, that was not official. So he says, one day there's going to be, there's a seal. Now the seal, I'm going to quote a little bit from one of my favorite authors, one of the founders of our church, Ellen White. The seal of the living God will be placed upon those who have a likeness of God's character. It does not mean we're God. It does not mean we're perfect. He said, but we're going to, you're going to be sealed. He said, as wax takes the impression of a seal, just like if you dip it and then you put the seal on it, he said, the soul, the soul is to take the impression, the reflection, the image of the spirit of God. So we need the spirit and to retain his image. He said, so, so you're gonna need the spirit of God to be able to reflect who Jesus Christ is. So just like that, you see that cross in there? There's a seal, now it's not a physical seal, but we're just using this as an analogy here. So you have an imprint, you place it, and you get this seal. And he says the Israelites, so there's an example in the Bible of a seal. The Israelites, way back when in the Old Testament, it says, do you remember that where they put over their doorpost? I won't read it all, but, and what that meant was that it says, we're sealed. He said, the, the angel of death is coming, so you need to put some blood over your doorpost. And that was a signature, a seal, that these people were God's children. And this mark, every Hebrew had to put it on. This is what it looked like. He said, put that over so that death angel, I need to know who you are. So they, 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 they put that mark, they put that blood. He said, that was a sign, that was a seal. He says, and then he says, um, the word of God tells us the sealing. So we're looking at two things, the seal and who's doing the sealing. He says, I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between me and them that they may know that I am the Lord. He says, the Sabbath day, not that we're saved by the Sabbath. He said, but the Sabbath is significant because it's part of the seal. Have you ever seen a seal? Every government official, the United States, everything, they have a seal. It tells them who the person is. Uh, usually it has the name. The name changes, but the governor, let's say, and I just found this one of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. There's a seal for the United States president. President Joe Biden, president of the United States of America. It gives the name, the position, and the dominion, the, the area, the location that they're over. And he says here, he says, those who would cease the Sabbath day, there's something in the Sabbath. I'm going to skip that one. He says, they're going to have to have a seal. So let's look at the um, fourth commandment. It says, the seal of God's law is found in the fourth commandment. There's something about the fourth commandment that's very different than anything else. It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. For the Sabbath is the Lord thy God, and it thou shalt not do any work. Thou art thy son, thy daughter, thy maidservant, thy manservant. It says, because the Lord thy God, he gave us the Sabbath day. It tells us who. It says that he gave us the Sabbath, and that it says he's the creator. It's the only place. It says in the law that he's the creator of the heavens and the earth. He claims, he says, look, I created this earth, and I'm saying to you all that there is a place, there is a, a sign, and that is my day. There's no, there's no reason we keep the Sabbath day other than God gave it to us. There's nothing really happening uh, celestially or in, the, uh, in astronomy. The reason we keep 365 days is because that's how long it takes for the earth to rotate around the sun. We keep the month because that's how long the, the sun and, and the moon interact, sort of, <laughs> we uh, have that rotation. But the week, the seventh day, is what God gave us. He says, I gave you this. This is the seal. It's found in the fourth commandment. Only one of the 10 that says the name Elohim, and it gives us the title. He's the creator of this world. So it declares to us that he's the creator. Aside from that, there's no other place in the law of God. Now, we're not saying we're, we're sealed. We're, we're saved by the law. But he's saying the Sabbath is special. The Sabbath tells us that when we honor the Sabbath, when we come to church, when we keep the Sabbath, it's saying, we are saying, I honor you, God, not because of what the world is saying, but because you told me to remember the Sabbath day because you kept it as well. You said, because you're the creator, I'm just asking for a place, a date with you, which is the seventh day Sabbath. So he said, there's a seal. And he said, just as soon 
um, this is SDA Bible commentary, just as soon as the people of God are sealed in their foreheads, it's not a, it's not a physical seal, nobody's gonna come and stamp you on your head, but he said as soon as you're sealed, and what that sealing is, is I'm settling into, I'm saying to God, I am not gonna be moved. I remember your Sabbath, I love you God, I'm going to do things your way, I'm not perfect, but I am committed to living for you. I'm committed to Jesus Christ. I'm not gonna be moved. I know there may be laws, there may be people coming against me, there may be lies, there may be persecution, whatever. Things may not be going the way I want, but I'm going to be settled and I'm going to be focused on you and committed to you all the days of my life. So that is the seal, and the sealer is the Holy Spirit. That is who is going to sell. He says, those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions. He says, if we live in the spirit, we will not walk in the flesh. If we live in the spirit, he says, walk in the spirit, live in the spirit. Why? He said, there's a seal and there's a sealing. God loves everybody. He loves every person on this planet. But he says, you have to choose. It is up to you, you have free will. He's not forcing anyone to do anything. He says, but I'm calling you to know that not only is there a day I want to meet with you just once a week, I wanna have a date with you, not only that I, I want a relationship with you, and that's what the fruit of the Spirit, I wanna fill you with the Spirit, and so you can bear fruit, and that you can live a wonderful life, because when you have love, joy, peace, goodness, long-suffering, it is wonderful. Sure, things may come against you, but you can deal with it because you have the Spirit of God and you can respond in love. You're not upset and angry and overwhelmed. So he says, there's going to be a time that we need. And we need him every day, but we most certainly need him in the end. He said, Holy Spirit is a necessity. Not, it's not an option for a Christian. We need the Holy Spirit. And he's part of the Godhead. So how do we prepare? And then I'm going to get my scripture and I'll be done. So first thing that we've been looking at, and that's why we started in uh, January, we were looking at faith and looked at Jesus Christ. So give your life to Jesus. That's the first thing. So if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, God is saying to you today, he's inviting you, give your life, say yes to Jesus. And then as you say yes, that means Bible study, baptism, joining our church, coming together, invite the Holy Spirit. Take your time. Every day, Holy Spirit, I invite you into my life. I invite you into this situation. I invite you into this decision. Holy Spirit, be with me. Learn, live, learn, and love through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's where he wants us to live. And he says, you're going to have to endure to the end. And the only way we can endure to the end, it's not going and buying some property out in the middle of nowhere. And nobody, you think nobody can find you, but there's GPS everywhere. There's drones everywhere. I saw this story. This man said he bought a property on the end of this dirt road that nobody could find them. And he says, every now that I go out, there's all these drones looking at us. And we were like, what is this? Why? They called the, the FAA, wrote letters. We thought we were out here by ourselves. No. They GPS the planet. So um, that, that's not what the preparation is or, or finding, I'm just going to buy thousands and thousands of dollars worth of food and canned food and all of this. Enduring to the end, preparing for the end is having a relationship with Jesus Christ and inviting the Holy Spirit, depending on the Holy Spirit every single day. That is what God has called us to do. So there's a story in the Bible my question is, are you ready for the end? Okay, I guess he put up a different one. There is a story in the Bible in Matthew 25. If you have your Bibles, turn there with me, and then we will be done here. Matthew 25. There's a story about two groups of people that are significant and reflective of who we are in this day and time, of where we are in Earth's history. It's the kingdom, so Matthew 25, chapter 1. The word of God reads... Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened. He says, what this kingdom, the kingdom of God, it it's, it's resembles 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. So he says, there's 10 virgins, five and five. They went out. So it's like a wedding. There are brides and then there's a groom. And he says, now five of them were wise. How for wise and how for foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil. They were preparing. They were all wanting to meet the groom. They were all preparing Jesus Christ. We know something is happening. We know God is coming back. And they were all preparing. And it says, those who were foolish took their lamps, 
but there was nothing to continue on with. They had a little light, they, they were sort of nearsighted, they were just looking at right now, today. They weren't looking at the bigger picture. And so they took their little lamps, they had some oil in it, because it was lit right then, but they didn't think about tomorrow and next week and the future of Amelia. They didn't think about, what, what will this be for, for my children? How will I make it through when persecution does happen? How will I make it through, How, what is God calling me in those difficult times, how do I deal with it? And yet the foolish, it says, they took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. So they had lamps, they had the light, they were looking for Jesus, and then they had a little bit of oil. They had some extra. They had symbolically in the word of God, oil is the Holy Spirit. It says they had extra. They had been having a relationship. They had been looking to Jesus. They had been coming to church. They've been praying. They've coming to Sabbath school, getting on the prayer line. They're staying connected with Jesus Christ. So they had oil in their lamps and they had extra. They weren't dry. They weren't dependent. And, and just looking to someone else. They had a relationship with Jesus Christ and they had oil. They had the Holy Spirit. And it says, while the groom delayed, let me tell you, Jesus is delaying his coming. He wants every person saved. He wants the person that, that doesn't know him, the person that's addicted to drugs, addicted to porn, the person that has no idea that there is a God that loves him. He is delaying his coming for them. He's delaying his coming for us until we are, until we are settled in our minds. Doesn't mean perfection, but there's a seal. He's saying, I want you to be sealed that you are my child and you're not going to go anywhere else. Regardless of what happens in the world, regardless of what the laws or, or the pressure or the cancel culture because they're anti-Christian, he says, I want you to be saved. I want you in my kingdom. And so he, he says this, he's delaying. The groom is delaying. Our groom is delaying his coming. He wants to come. He wants to take us home. But he's saying, I love every one of you and I do not want you lost. I want you saved. I want you to go to heaven with me. I want you to live with me all the days of your life. So he says, while the, the groom delayed, they all went to sleep. <laughs> they all said, oh, I've got, I'm tired. I've got so much to do. They were all sleeping and they slept. They said they were slumbered and slept. They were tired and they slept. And then it says at the most inopportune time, the most unexpected time, what groom comes at midnight? Now, this is also a cultural story as well, because the grooms, they would go, they would ask the parents for the daughter's hand in marriage. Then they would go and, and go prepare a place for them. And they'd come back and say, I'm ready. I've made a place, I've made a home. Come on, I want my bride. And so at midnight, so that's God telling us he's going to come unexpectedly. No one is, you can't set a date. We don't know when that will happen. But he's saying he's going to come back. And so... He says, the cry came, behold, the bridegroom's coming. They heard, Jesus is coming. The bride, the, my groom is coming. And so they're like, okay, it's time to go out and meet him. Then all the virgins, everybody got up. They trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, he says, come give me some of your oil. Can I have some of what you have? I haven't really been preparing. I've been so busy about just right now, me and myself. I didn't even think ahead. I didn't think, well, yeah, I need to be ready for the bridegroom. I know I need some, some oil. He said, but I need to be, be ready for the bridegroom. I need to know the bridegroom. I need to know. And regardless of how long it may take, God is saying, if you have the Holy Spirit, if you invite the Holy Spirit, you can endure. If he doesn't come till 2029, 2050, whatever, if we're still alive, he says, you can endure. You can make it through if you invite the Holy Spirit. So here we've got two groups of people. One wise, one thinking not just for today, but I'm looking at the bigger picture. One who is foolish, one who's seeing right here, right now. One who's prepared, one who did not. One who was patient, one who was not. One who's looking forward to this transformational time that their lives will never be the same. And so it says here, it says, but the, the wise answer, they said, give me, give me, give, can, can I have some of what you have? Because you cannot share 
your relationship with Jesus. You can share what God has done for you, but your relationship is personal, who you are with Jesus. When you ask God to invite, to fill you with the Holy Spirit, that's for you. Just like if we can all be at a table and we're going to have a little refreshments for uh, the parents of Amelia and for a grandmother there. We're gonna have a few refreshments, but each person's gonna go and we can all look at the food, but when I eat, it will do nothing for your muscles and your cells and your digestive system. When you eat, it's for you. And so God is saying the same thing. He says, your relationship must be personal. You must choose Jesus Christ. You have to say on a Tuesday morning and a Wednesday morning, God, I need you. I invite you into my life, Holy Spirit. What shall I do? What do I do? What, what, where do you want me to read the Bible? Let me pray. Let me stay connected to you through the day and not just today, but for the rest of my life. And he's saying that the seal and the sealer in the last days, he said before he comes back, there will be a sealing. And he says here, he says, this is what he says, verse uh, Matthew 25, the word of God reads, it says, they said, no, I cannot give you. <laughs> when I partake of the food, I, I can't give it to you. I, I need it for my own nutrition. It says, lest there won't be enough for us. It says, go, buy, go your way, rather, uh, to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they were busy, because they did not prepare, because they did not have the Holy Spirit, they did not have that relationship that was founded and grounded, while they came, while they were busy going to do something that they should have done before, the groom comes. The procession, they would have a procession. The groom would come to the house, where's my bride? And then they would all, the virgins would come behind and everyone's singing and dancing. And, uh, they keep going and while they were gone, busy, distracted, doing things that they should have done previously, while they did that, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in. He says, what the Holy Spirit is for in the last days is to help us to be prepared for the end. It's not going out and buying, being a prepper. And if you're a prepper, prep. <laughs> but that's not the preparation. The preparation is for the Holy Spirit. It's to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, a relationship that is solid, a relationship that is grounded. That's what he is calling for. And he says, those who were ready went with him to the wedding and the door was shut. He said, there's going to come a day the door will be shut. And he said, afterward, the virgins came. They said, Lord, Lord, open up, open up. He said, do you know what Jesus said? He says, I don't know you. I, I, I know you maybe here and there may have thought about me. or so. He says, but I don't have a relationship with you. And that's why you're not with me. And what I wanted for you all these years, all these days, when I brought Amelia and all of us through our mother's womb, he says, I knew you first. And my desire for you all these days was to have a relationship with you. My desire for all these days is for you to say yes. My desire all these days was for you not to have to do it yourself, but know that I've sent the helper, I've sent the power, I've sent what you need through the Holy Spirit. And all you had to do was say yes and come in and let me, let me help you. Let me have a relationship. And he says... I don't know you. I, I, I can't open up now. I, I, I do not know you. And so what he's saying to us, he's saying that I, he says, so watch. He says, because you don't know the day nor the hour that he's coming. And he says, you don't have to be afraid. We do not have to be overzealous. He says, what you need to do is prepare by having the Holy Spirit, inviting the Spirit of God, having a relationship with Jesus Christ, inviting them into our lives every day. That is the preparation for the end. That's what he's calling us to do. So as the praise team comes, I want to just share with you that I was that person at one time. I... I went to church, I loved God in my own way, but I was sort of, as you would say, lukewarm. I was on the fence. I was back and forth. Surely I wanted a relationship with God, but I also wanted to do my own thing. Surely I wanted a relationship, but I wanted all my, to choose my own friends, whether they, whatever they exposed me to, whatever. Surely I wanted a relationship, but I was so distracted. I was so busy. In my own mind, I was trying to figure it out, trying to make sense of everything. And until I stopped trying to do it myself, until I realized that it was never meant for me to do it myself. Until I realized that this is about a relationship with Jesus Christ 
and I can lean on the one that he left for me, the comforter, the helper, the power, the teacher. I can lean, we can lean on him. We do not have to try to do everything ourselves. We cannot carry this weight. We cannot even deal with all of the issues here, the evil, the difficulties in our relationships at work, uh, the, the difficulties, maybe you have a diagnosis, maybe you have a, 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 an issue at school, School. Maybe you have an issue in your finances, in, in emotions. You're just anxious and you don't even know what to do with it. He's saying, I have made a way and I've left you the one that will help you through it. And you may just, everything may just be going good for you. Everything is wonderful, but you're distracted and you know you're off balance there. God is saying that in these last days, the preparation for what's coming is a relationship, a solid relationship with him. And in that relationship, he's saying to us, yes, you need to say yes to Jesus. Have Bible studies, baptism. Maybe you've already been baptized 30 years, 40 years, praise God. But he's saying, he says, I need you on a daily basis, asking for, inviting, Holy Spirit, come into my life. That's what he's saying. He says, and you will be prepared for whatever comes. And I tell you, things will come. People are coming. People come in our lives to help. Some people come to tear down. He says, whatever is going on, he says, I, he has the answer. And all he's asking for is a yes. He's saying, say yes to me, invite me in. I will help you. You don't have to carry this weight anymore. So at this time, as they start singing, praise God. I want us to stand. I want us to stand and just talk to God. To sing these words. Because the place that he's trying to take us to is that we build our relationships, our lives, our Christianity, everything that we're doing. The cornerstone must be Jesus and inviting his Holy Spirit. So I want us to just sing this and let this sink in as we praise God. And then I will come back and praise God.
time I want the elders to come. You may be seated. We just want to have a season of prayer. If you would like prayer, if there's a place you need to rededicate your life, you want to stand in the gap, you just need prayer for something, this is what our elders are here for, and myself. I want you to come down for prayer. They're going to pray, just uh, continue to play a little bit, and uh, praise God. We want to say a special prayer for grandmother as well. Um, but if you'd like prayer, we're just going to go ahead. They're going to sing and pray silent. Don't be afraid. If you have an issue, come, bring it. You need to rededicate. You need more of the Holy Spirit. You need to get, get it right with God. Come down. Come down and say, have them pray for you. Come down. Come down. Yes. Thank you. Come down. Let, let them pray over you. Let them pray for you. If you know someone that is not saved, if no, you know someone that's struggling, Come down and ask them to pray for that person. Pray for your children. Pray for your family. Ask them to pray. Praise God. Come down and pray. Yes, come for prayer. You can be young. Doesn't matter how old you are. Come down. Come down and pray. The rest of us, let us just pray. Be in prayer for a few moments while they're coming down. You can come up. Come on up. Yes, pray. Stand in the gap. They will do that for you. Sometimes we go through things and it's just heavy. It's too difficult for us. Have them pray for you. That's what we're here for. If you need prayer, come down. Come down and pray. Praise God. If you want prayer, just go to an elder and pray. Ask them to pray. Just go to an elder. Ask them to pray for you. Yes. Praise God. If you need prayer, come on up. Anyone. You may be going through something at your school. Come down. If you're a child, you can come. We'll pray for you. Nothing is too small or too large. Come down and we'll be glad to pray. You need to stand in the gap for your spouse. Come down and pray. We'll pray. Praise God. Praise God. Come down. Just a few more minutes and we'll close. Praise God. Spirit, Father, pray the Spirit upon your people, Lord. Jesus. Do you want me to pray for you? I can pray for you, Marty. You can turn my mic off. Yes.
Amen. Praise God. Praise God. If you're praying, you can continue on. If you want to come up afterwards, that's fine. Let us go ahead and close. We, as I said, we are going to have a few refreshments so you can greet the, the family, greet a grandmother, Rose. Praise be to God. Make sure you say goodbye to her. She is going back to Africa, to her country. And we thank God for you and for uh, the parents as well. It is time that we walk in the Spirit. That's what God has called us to do, to walk in the Spirit. Invite Him in every day, and we will fulfill the mandate, the desire. What God has called us to do, we don't have to do it in our own strength. We cannot, but through the Spirit. He is the cornerstone. First, build your house with that cornerstone, Jesus Christ. Then He says, invite the Spirit. Let us pray. Father, we say thank you. Thank you for a beautiful time together. Thank you for Amelia and her parents. Thank you for Rose, uh, her love, her presence here, Father God, and her ministry here as she has supported and helped us, Father God. We say thank you. Thank you for each and every person, Lord. Pour your spirit. Help us to remember every day. It's not a, we're not doing it in our own strength. It's through your power, which is the Holy Spirit. So help us to invite you in each and every day to lean upon you. Help us, Father, to know that you're with us, that you love us. The good news is that we have the victory when we are with you. When, you, when we make you the cornerstone and we invite your spirit in, we have the victory. And we say thank you. Thank you that the Holy Spirit is here to comfort, to give us power, to seal us. Thank you, Lord. It's a stacked deck. We've won when we come to you. So, Father, I ask that you bless each of us, bless us this week, bless each person here, protect us, guide us, keep our immune system strong, keep your angels around us, bless our children to grow in you, bless the marriages, bless them, help them to be strong, help them to grow together, to love you first and then each other, help them to have a bond, bless the little ones here as they go to school, help them to learn about Jesus, bless our singles, Lord, bless them to know they are more than enough, bless our visitors, Lord. Lord, to not only come again, but to be blessed, to walk with you and to talk with you. Bless each of us with your presence this week. Help us to stay connected and to make you the cornerstone each and every day. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the fruit of the Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that you've done it all. We say thank you. Bless our elders. Continue to pour your spirit upon them. Continue to fill them. Bless the praise team. Continue to pour your spirit. Bless them with the desires of their heart. Our AV team, pour your spirit, Father God. Bless your people. We love you today. It's, it, it is a little bit drizzly outside or rain, but it's beautiful. And it's bright in here because of your presence and your power. And we say thank you for your love. Bless your children now, Lord, as we depart from this place, but not from your presence. We love you. We praise you. We adore you. We give you all praise, all glory, all honor, all power, all authority is yours. And we say thank you for your mercy, your grace, your compassion for leading us and guiding us. Thank you, Father. We love you. We say thank you. In Jesus' name, let us all say together. Amen. God bless you. Give someone a hug. And remember to say yes. Give someone a hug. Say thank you. Thank you, elders. God bless you. Christ.